Hey there! This month's creativity subscription is all about watercolor. I love watercolor because of how easy it is to get such beautiful results. In this video, I'll walk you through some of the basics, including mixing colors and creating different textures. And from there, we'll create some projects so you can turn your watercolor into stationery and artwork. Here's what you'll find in your watercolor subscription box. A brush set that comes in this neat bamboo roll-up pack. You've got a variety of different sizes here, which we'll go into how to use them. And then more spaces for more brushes. Next, we have a watercolor pad. This is a heavyweight paper that's perfect for watercolor. It's a cold press, which means it has a bit of texture on the surface. Then there's a travel watercolor set. It comes with a built-in palette, a variety of colors, and then a water brush that's great for travel as well. There's instruction on the package on how to use this, but you can simply remove this plug, fill this with water, and then screw it together, and you're ready to paint on the go. It also comes with a little sponge that's helpful for cleaning your brush off in between colors when you're traveling. And then it comes apart and tucks back in there. And lastly, there um, is some masking fluid. Uh, and this is used for creating a resist when you're water coloring. And I'll show you how to use it. So to get set up to paint, you're going to need your brushes, your paper, your paints, and then two containers of water, and a rag or paper towel. The reason I use two containers of water is it helps prevent get really muddy colors. So I use one um, of the containers for rinsing out warm colors and one of the containers for rinsing out cool colors. Another way you can approach it is to use one of these to pick up water to blend with and another to rinse and clean out your brush. So let's review the brushes. There's three different shapes of brush here. One is our mop brush, one is our flat brush, and then we have three different sizes of round brushes. The mop brush is great when you have to cover a, a big surface with a lot of paint or water. Uh, the flat brush is great for doing crisp lines or corners, and the round brush is really versatile for creating a lot of different shapes. Um, and we've got three sizes here, so you can go from very detailed to broader. So let's take a look at our paint colors next. Uh, one thing that can be helpful is to create a palette on your paper, so you can really see the true colors of each one of these, uh, and also play around with the spectrum of color you can get from each one. So I'm gonna start by using my larger round tip brush and just get that wet and I'm basically going to start at the top uh, and work my way through. So this is a white watercolor and so this is something that is basically going to be almost translucent when you look at it on the paper. Um, but what this can be used for is to soften some of the other colors um, just a touch, uh, it'll basically turn them into a pastel. I try to go easy on blending white because it can muddy some of the colors a little bit. Um, but go ahead and just play with it, see what it looks like on the paper, um, and you can make it more and more translucent by adding a little bit of water each time. So this isn't gonna be as easy to see on camera, um, but it's good to just play with this and get a sense of the variation. 
Now I'm gonna make sure that's rinsed completely off. What I'm doing here is just adding a little bit of water in between, in between each swatch of color, just so I can see the difference. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go in and use this yellow. So I'm just adding a little bit of water to that paint and getting a good heavy coating of it on my brush. And this is gonna be the most saturated version of this yellow. So you can see what that looks like. And then I'm just gonna gradually lighten it by dipping it into the water each time in between each swatch I'm making here. And you can just do this till you get it to be gradually almost the white of the paper. So it helps to get a sense of your colors ahead of time so you know how you can start using them. And I'm just doing a little bit of water and I kind of um, press my brush against the side of the cup um, so that I'm not creating big puddles on my paper. I think one thing as you start out with watercolor is just getting the hang of how much water you should be adding. And it can, it can depend on the kind of effect you're going for. But this is a good exercise not just to see the range of color, but get the hang of how much water you're adding to your brush and just playing around with that. So what we're doing now is we're just pulling straight from the palette, the paint palette here to create this range of color on our paper. Um, but once you get through your palette, you can also start playing with mixing colors. So I mentioned before, you can add white to different colors to get pastels. Um, but you can see here that water can kind of work as your white, so to speak. So you don't necessarily have to add white to go from red to a more pink color. So always consider mixing your watercolor with water before you're adding the white paint. So this is more of a magenta color. So this will also get us to a light pink as we add the water. One thing you'll learn as you continue to play with watercolor is that um, some watercolors, uh, some colors are more opaque than others. So that's another reason it's helpful to kind of play with your paint colors before you start painting. You can see the differences in intensity from one color to the next. And you can see that um, once you see your color on the paper, you really get a sense of the true color. Um, whereas sometimes it's harder to tell when it's in cake form how that's gonna look on paper. So this little guide might be something that you want to, I'm gonna switch to my cool colors here. Um, this might be a guide that you want to keep and you can even label each row with the corresponding number on your paint palette. Go with this light green. one more out of this, it's almost clear. In the last row here, we have some more neutrals. Great for doing landscapes. Back 
to my cool water. You can see this is an example of a color that has a little bit more opaque look um, than say one of um, that yellow there, for example. So the more water you add, the more translucent it will be. So I've got this really nice reddish brown color. Of course, I made it all the way and I have one more color left, so I'll probably do that along the side going this way with my black. Now black is something I don't use a lot in watercolor um, because maybe I'll do it right here. Um, Cause you'll find that you can create shadows with a blue and have a more natural looking shadow. If you really look around in nature, nature you'll notice a lot of the things you just kind of think of as black are actually a color. So I really try to work with the other colors in my palette if I'm trying to do something like create shadow. So I really get from black to gray to almost white there. So now I've got my palette laid out here in different gradations. So let's play around with mixing some colors. So while this palette comes with 12 cakes of watercolor colors, there's really an infinite number of colors you can get out of this palette by mixing them together. And watercolors are really so, so easy to mix. Um, you simply dip your brush into some water, pick up your first color. Um, so let's say I want uh, to create a little bit more orangey red. Um, so it doesn't matter which one you grab first. I'm gonna start with my orange and I'm just getting enough water to kind of loosen up that pigment and pick it up and drop some right here. And then I'm gonna get a little more water. And I didn't clean off my brush completely. Um, I let some of the orange stay on there. And then you just add that red and mix it in. So now I can go over here and see that I have a slightly more orangey red. Um, and if you want it to be even more orangey, you can just keep mixing. Watercolor is so flexible and easy to blend with. I'm just gonna keep mixing this in to get a lighter, more orangey red. And you can see I'm getting a little red mixed on that orange, which is no big deal. It's easy to clean it off with just a little bit of water. So now I've got three other versions of this red. And I'm gonna rinse that off in my cool palette. So you can have a lot of fun playing with creating different colors. You can use this lid as your mixing palette, um, or you can also find separate palettes to mix even more colors. So if I know that I'm gonna do maybe a larger painting where I wanna use a lot of this, I might mix a bunch here so it's ready to go. If this dries up, all you need to do is just dip your brush in water and loosen that up a bit. Watercolor is also really easy to just kind of blend as you go. Um, as long as it's still wet on your paper. So if I laid that down and thought, oh, that's a little more orangey than I wanted. Maybe I'll add a little more red. You can simply mix it directly on your paper. So that's two ways to blend watercolor. One on your palette, another directly on your paper. You can also dip your brush in two colors before you apply it to the paper. So I might pick up a little bit of this 
light yellow and then the more orangey yellow and then go ahead and apply it. So that's a little bit looser. Sometimes you might see the two colors unblended um, as you apply it and um, that might be your desired effect. Um, and if it's not, you can kind of keep blending with your brush. So a lot of different ways to mix watercolors. It's one of the things I love about it is very free flowing and easy. So let's play around with how you can create different effects with watercolor. So up until now, we've just been brushing the paint directly onto dry paper, uh, like I did here. Uh, but another thing you can do is actually wet your paper first with just clear water. And this can help if you've got a large surface to cover uh, and you wanna be able to blend the paint really easily or if you just know you're gonna be mixing a lot of colors in a way that you want them to um, blend together really smoothly, that can be another reason to start with water first. You can see the paint is just starting to blend across that surface where we put the water down ahead of time. This does look a little less saturated than when we apply the paint directly to the paper without water first, but you can keep adding to make it darker. Another thing you can do is actually add water afterwards to get some interesting effects. So if I pick up my paint here, I've got a nice smooth swatch of color and I can kind of drop some water in here. And what's happening is the water is starting to push the pigment aside. And so the more water, the more obvious that effect will be. So for example, I can keep kind of dabbing this and you'll see it continue to spread. And this happens a bit slowly. So as it's drying, you'll see it continue to spread a little bit and get lighter. You can also play around with mixing colors that way. So if I did a swatch of blue again, let's make that a bit lighter. I could go in with a different color. Maybe I'll grab some yellow and just kind of drop that in there. And you see it kind of spread out. So it's really reacting to the fact that there's um, some, some water and paint underneath there and just kind of spreading and the colors are also blending. So you can see um, this yellow mixing with the blue to create a little bit of a green. So it's, it's helpful to know how the colors react when, you, um, when they touch or overlap as you're painting. As long as, one, as, long as um, they're both wet, there will be some blending. So this is one example where it's kind of dropped in the middle, but you can also blend a little bit differently, even just by two colors kind of touching. So if I put down some of this blue, and this time I'm gonna pick up a green. Even if they just kind of kiss a little bit, you'll see that the blue is pulling into that green color. And you can get all sorts of really cool effects as they blend. Um, sometimes I like to just kind of let them mix um, and play around with it and see what I get. If you want there to be clean lines and no blending, then um, you would want to let one of the colors dry or just be careful not to touch them. You can also blend as you go on the paper. And we talked a little bit about this already, um, but let's do it again with a larger swatch. Just see how you can kind of start with one color and then bring in, I'm gonna do this different green, another color. And you can let them kind of blend naturally, but you can also kind of work one of the colors into the other. 
and in some areas I'm getting a real real blend some of the areas there's still some separation but as long as this is all still wet you can keep kind of blending them as you go now I mentioned if you don't want these blends to happen you have to let one of the colors dry so I'm going to give that one a little bit longer uh, to dry completely. You can see some of it was lifting off, so it's still damp. So I'll come back to that in a second and apply some wet paint over top and you can see the difference. Okay, so now this swatch here is dry. So I'm just going to show you the difference of painting wet on dry versus all the kind of wet on wet mixing we've been doing here. So I can brush right over top of that and this blue still has a clean, crisp edge to it. Um, one of the things that's cool about this is you can kind of see that optical color mixing where you go from this green to a blue-green and back to the green again, but you still have these really clean lines. Um, so if you're doing a painting um, where you want to, maybe you're doing a landscape and you need to paint trees over top of the hills in the background, you would probably wait until your hills are dry and then you would go back in and paint your trees in the foreground. So now that we've played around with creating different effects, let's go ahead and start experimenting with creating different color mixes and patterns on our paper. Um, and this is a great way to loosen up, but it's also um, a great way to create finished pieces, whether it's stationary or some artwork that you wanna hang on your wall. So I'm gonna start with my mop brush to just really wet the surface. So you can see how I can really cover a lot of ground with fewer brush strokes and just more quickly so that the water doesn't dry up too much before I start applying the paint. And so I think I'll start just by playing with kind of blending in different strokes of color um, using some of the cooler colors. So I'm going to start with the blue And mix in some of this green too. And you can see how they just kind of bleed into one another. I'm gonna pick up some of this as well. And so, you know, when you're doing something like a landscape, You'll do a lot of this, where you might fill in the sky this way, or an ocean this way. But I also think this can just be a beautiful abstract background. Um, for example, you could do a poem or a quote, um, whether it's lettered or um, printed on top. Here's an example of one with dimensional stickers, and this is simply doing these kind of brush strokes back and forth um, and doing some blending as you go, or even leaving some white space. I'm gonna go back in and just kind of drop in some color that way. So this is a moment you should totally experiment and have fun with it and just kind of see how the paint moves with the water. Um, no pressure here, it's a good way to just get started. Um, but again, you could also turn this into some artwork that you could frame. I'm gonna sneak in some of this magenta to create a little bit of a purple.
Um, and so since I use this mop brush to apply that water, you can see I still have some movement here. Um, and as you see things begin to dry, um, that's when you can either kind of add some more water or just know it's gonna blend a little bit differently. So have fun playing with this. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and switch it up and try a different technique on the next one. So for this next one, I think instead of adding water ahead, I'm gonna blend as I go. And I'm gonna get my larger round brush. Oh, I've got some green in there. Just gonna pick that up. There we go. So I still am gonna keep my brush pretty wet because I wanna be able to kind of mix colors as I go. So I'm just kind of picking up each one and blending it in. So you see, because that is still wet, it blends really nicely. And I can kind of stretch and fade these colors by continuing to add water and kind of pull it through. And you can see different colors react more dramatically to mixing than others. So it's really fun when you see it kind of fan out like that and really blend. So I'm just gonna kind of keep blending with some of these warmer colors. So these colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, um, like the orange and red and yellow, those are considered analogous colors and typically you can create a really beautiful piece of abstract art playing with those analogous colors and they blend really well in the watercolor. I'm gonna introduce a little bit of something different here to kind of create some variety. I'm mixing the magenta and blue, which as you can see, turned out even more blue than magenta. And I get a really nice purple with those two. And so some of the areas that are drying up a bit, you'll get more of a crisp overlap if you come back to them. And if you don't want that to happen, you just can kind of go in and start mixing before it gets a chance to do that. But I like there to be kind of a variety of things happening when I paint a field of color like this, so I don't mind that happening. So again, you should just have fun painting your paper however you want and just playing with some of your favorite techniques that we just went through in the beginning and kind of testing out how they work together. I'm just dropping some water in here. You can see some of this is partially dry, so it the spread is limited, but you still get some interesting effects. And if I want it to be more dramatic, I can do that while it's more wet. So the technique I'm doing here as I'm kind of how I'm kind of blending the colors in this circular motion uh, is kind of like how I approach doing the, a night sky or kind of galaxy painting. Um, so that's one thing that we can test out next. But again, this um, could be a really interesting background for a quote or something, or I could cut it up and collage with it or turn it into stationary, or you can even cut it up and turn it into another kind of artwork. For example, a monogram 
or um, an ampersand or uh, a silhouette of someone, uh, you can really create some interesting artwork even just from cutting these uh, paintings up. So I like finding ways to make watercolor really accessible and easy and fun, even if you don't have you know, a background in art or illustration or painting, there's just the natural beauty of the color and textures itself um, looks, looks beautiful on its own. So next I'm gonna take some of the techniques we just went through and show you how you can use them to create this sort of kind of night sky or galaxy painting. So with this, I'm using a lot of kind of blues, a little bit of purple, but you can also play around with other colors to create your own kind of customized galaxy painting. But to get started, I'm gonna blend some of those colors ahead of time in my palette here, just to get a sense of the range I can create. Um, so starting with this really dark blue and then maybe bringing in some of this magenta to get more of that kind of purple. Extend that with a little bit of water. And I may have to mix more of this as I go, but um, it's helpful to figure some of this out in advance. So you kind of have a game plan. I don't like using a ton of black, like I mentioned, but I think it'd be nice to get a really deep, dark navy. So I'm gonna do those two colors together, this dark blue and a little black. You can see that creates a really intense kind of midnight color. And then I might create a, just a, another version of blue here with this kind of royal blue mixed with the navy. All right. So I'll probably um, continue to blend on the paper as well, but those are gonna be some kind of staples that I'll continue to kind of mix as I go. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add water to my paper with the mop brush. And I'm not gonna cover the whole thing, but I'm gonna get a good section filled here. I'm about due for a water change, but I think we'll be okay for this. Um, this one's a little bit looser here. I'm creating more of kind of a rectangle, but you can go either way. And now I'm going to um, use my round brush to start bringing in color. And I'm actually gonna start with a little bit of the, the lighter blue first and start creating kind of depth on top of that as I go. You can see how this is really blending into the water. I'm gonna just thin this out to create a little bit lighter blue as well. And when you're doing the galaxy painting, you're not covering the whole thing with one color. You're kind of leaving gaps for um, lighter and darker versions and you're blending in different colors as you go. I'm gonna bring in some of this more intense blue now. Kind of working that in using circular motions and I'm kind of adding a little bit of water here and there as I go too to make sure things keep blending. I'm gonna do some of the magenta straight up in there. Like I mentioned you can do different colors you can even go a little bit more into the kind of golden colors, little maybe orange and yellow, but I'm making this more of a kind of night sky 
So I'm sticking with kind of the different versions of blue and purple. So I'm kind of blending on top of the water until I can get some good depth of color here. Still leaving some spots that are going to be lighter, but then also bringing in some more intense colors like this. And you can do this all in one go, or you can let a layer dry and go back in and add more. Just kind of depends on how happy you are with it or if you want it to be more intense. Sometimes as you let the colors dry, they do lighten up a bit. So I always like to get to a point where I'm ready to let it sit and dry and then then I decide after that if I want to keep going or if I like it. And basically this kind of push and pull of light and dark colors is what helps create that depth that you think of when you look into a night sky. So that's what we're going for here. And that's where kind of layering color on color can help create that too. And if you ever apply color and it's maybe more intense than, than you want, you can always kind of rinse out your brush and spread that around a bit or just kind of lighten it up. So along with um, kind of blending in the color with the circular motion, like we've been doing, you can also kind of dab and just see how that spreads in. And the wetter your surface is, the more it's going to spread. And the other thing you can do, like we learned in the beginning, is just kind of clean your brush and dab some water into the color to see it spread. This is also known as lifting when you're pulling pigment off your paper. And another way to make that lifting more intense is actually to use some of your white to really lift that color. So you can see it's a much more dramatic contrast when I use the white to do that with. So it's kind of up to you how far you want to take it before you let it dry. I'm going to go a little bit further before I call it a day on this one. I'm also kind of blending some of the color out past that edge because I like the way that looks. But it's up to you whether you want to do that or not. Just going to create a little bit more purple here. And then I think I'm going to finish up by just lifting some more. And I'll take one more look and then possibly let it dry after that. I'm, you know, lifting with this white color, but you could also drop, create little specks of some of the darker colors as well. I'll show you how that looks in a second. And I'll, um, probably come back here with some more white later for stars. But I've got some of these darker colors. 
can drop in. magenta in here to add some variety. I think I'm going to stop and let that dry a bit, see how it um, looks when it's dry, and then either finish it from there or I can always add another layer. Okay, so the first layer of my night sky painting has dried, and I think I'll go in and just add a little bit more blue um, since a lot of these lighter spots have a more of a gray tone. Um, so I'm going to add some blue to give them some depth and a little bit more color. I have some fresh water now. And I'm going to go in with kind of this lighter, brighter blue. And one thing that I did end up doing as it was drying before is I did lift a little bit more of the paint and extend the edges a little bit while it was still wet. Now while I'm adding kind of this lighter, more vibrant blue, you could add darker layers at this point too, or you could add more magenta. It's really up to you and how you want it to look as to what you add if you decide to add anything at all. But you can see, since this bottom layer is dry, it's not blending with what I'm adding. And since this top layer is translucent, everything that I already painted is coming through. All right, so I have a good layer of the blue on there, and I'm just gonna make it a little bit more saturated in a few areas. And then I might just blend in a little bit of the darker blue here and there. I'm gonna wet this a little bit more. <clears throat> I think that's about does it. <clears throat> I'm just going to lift in a couple of spots. And now I'm going to let that dry. Now that my night sky is dry, I'm going to go ahead and create some stars by spattering some white paint. So I'm going to go ahead and, whoops, I got a little orange in there. So I'm going to just wipe that up a bit and blot it. Try that again. So mix some water in there so it's nice and liquidy. And I'm going to go ahead and start spattering. I'm starting with a really fine kind of spatter. And then I'll start making that a little heavier too. So you can see the more um, water on your brush, the heavier the spatter or stars. And I can also do the method where I tap the brush. And this definitely gets bigger stars.
And you can make this as heavy or light as you want to, but I like to do a lot. I'm starting to use up some of that water in the paint, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. All right, here we go. And then, again, if there's anything on here that you don't like, you have the opportunity to kind of blot it a little bit. there you have your night sky so once this is dry you could cut it up into stationery or you could maybe cut out a monogram and frame it um, or you could write a message over top and frame that In addition to framing your watercolor designs, you can also turn them into beautiful stationery, and there's a lot of approaches you can take to doing that. Here's just a few examples. Uh, the first one over here, I simply took those watercolor sheets and punched out circles and collaged them onto these cards. You can also hand cut uh, different designs and shapes and just have fun layering them. Uh, this one I even added a little pen on top to create a little bit more dimension. You can also just cut and fold the sheets that you paint and turn them into note cards. In this case, I added a message on top. Or you can have fun just painting directly onto folded cards. I use these luxe white cards that do well with watercolor, but you can also create your own folded cards by simply cutting and folding your watercolor paper. Another watercolor technique to try out is uh, creating a resist and painting over top. So that's where this masking fluid comes into play. It comes in this bottle where you can just snip the tip and use that as an applicator and just kind of write with it or draw with it. Um, I sometimes like to pour a little out into a cup and paint with it. Uh, you can get some air bubbles if you're applying directly from the applicator tip, so that's why I like to brush with it. Um, so first of all, I'm just going to shake this up, and I'm going to squeeze a little bit into this cup. Not too much. <clears throat> and so this is a fluid that I'm going to paint on, and you can create a design or you can write a word. Like I can say hello. And I'm just gonna brush this on and let it dry. So what happens is this, when it dries, turns into kind of a gummy texture that you can take off very easily. Um, but before you do that, you can paint over top and wherever you have the masking fluid is not going to get paint on it. It will just um, protect the paper underneath. So once the paint is dry, you can remove the masking fluid and then you'll have that white paper come through underneath or whatever um, color paper you're using. So I just did a nice even coat there. I have my message, hello. Um, you wanna rinse out your brush right away. You don't want that gummy 
masking fluid drying on there. And then this will need to dry for a few minutes. Um, so I'm gonna set that aside. But I do have some already painted with different messages. So you can see the color has changed a bit um, when it dries. It's a little bit more yellow, easier to see. And I'm just gonna go ahead and paint over top of it. Um, while, I, while I'm at it, I'll show you one other way you can kind of mask, which is if you've got some washi tape, you can, here I'll use a color so it's easier to see, washi tape or masking uh, tape of some kind, you can actually kind of cover your paper that way as well. So you could create designs or you could create a border. I'm actually gonna go a little bit narrower on my border. So see how this just peels right up? And it's kind of translucent so you can see where you're putting it. And I'm not making this perfect, but if you really wanted to be meticulous about it, you could measure your borders. So now wherever there is this tape, that will protect the paper as well. Just to make sure it's pressed down because if it's not pressed down all the way, paint can leak underneath there. So now I can just paint on top of this. So I'm gonna, oops, I had a little bit of color on there. So I'm just going to kind of have fun. You can see how it's resisting the color. I like to do a little bit darker color near the resist because if the color is very, very light and close to the paper color, there won't be as much definition between where you put the resist and the paper color. So I make sure it's something kind of darker in there. All right, so now I'm just gonna let it dry and I'll show you how to peel it off. So now that my paint is dry, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the resist and you can just kind of gently rub that off with your fingers. And you'll see it'll come off like this gummy substance. comes off really easily. Um, you just wanna make sure your paper is definitely dry because if it's still wet, it might be a little softer and this, this process could cause it to tear. There we go, and we have our message underneath. And next I'll gently peel back this tape. This tape's really good about peeling up without tearing the paper, but it is possible if, again, the paper's still damp, or if you just are aggressively tearing this off, it could damage the paper. So I still try to do this somewhat slowly and gently. Ta-da! And there you have it. So again, you can do this to write all sorts of messages. You can also create patterns this way. Um, and you could layer a few times if you wanted to, like I could paint a wash over top of this um, to get some different colors, or maybe I'd add just like a, some polka dots or something. So you could really play with layering when, you, when it comes to the resist as well.
even if you don't have any painting or drawing experience, really just about anybody can create a simple laurel wreath with watercolors. Uh, in this case, I'm going to do it on a folded piece of stationery, um, which again, you can use folded cards or you can take your paper pad and create your own folded cards out of it. So to start with, I am going to just use a lid as a guideline to create kind of a half circle for my laurel. And I'm just tracing it lightly with pencil. You don't actually have to trace something. You could do this freehand if you prefer. Um, sometimes it helps to have a little guide. And I'm gonna be filling in my leaves here. Um, but I'm also gonna be adding a message here. And I think I'm gonna actually do the message first and then fill in with my leaves. Um, and you can do your message in pen or you can paint it in watercolor. And so I'm gonna do it in a sort of peachy, orangey color. And I'm just gonna say hello. Since I'm doing the greeting first, it'll be a little easier to work the leaves around the message because the placement of those doesn't have to be as exact. All right, so there's my hello. I might darken it up a little bit over here. Okay, now I'm gonna add my leaves. So they're gonna follow this shape here. And um, I'm gonna do them in like a bluey green color, which you can do them in whatever color you want. I'm gonna start on the end with my first leaf shape, just like a little almond shape. And then I'm gonna go off the sides. So I'm always kind of starting on this line here. And I'm alternating the leaf shapes. And I'm just doing kind of one color, but you can incorporate more colors. You can update this to different colors depending on the season. And as I get towards the center, I'm making them a little bit smaller. I'm making mine pretty open, but you could make it more dense. You can really play around with the design. So I'm gonna flip this so I don't end up dragging my hand in wet paint and just repeat along this side. Again, making it a little bit smaller here as I meet in the middle. And you can even add some little wisps there if you want to. All right, now I'm gonna let that dry.
Once your card is dry, you can go in and add a little detail with pen if you like. So I'm just gonna go in and add some definition to the stem and also add a little veining on the leaves. And I like doing kind of a faint, somewhat broken line, but you can make it a little heavier if you prefer. And you could add outlines to the leaves if you prefer. I like adding just a little bit. And I'm using a Micron. Um, this pen's nice because it um, has a really fine line. It also dries pretty quickly. So I shouldn't have to worry about smudging that. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little shadow to my lettering as well. Just a little touch here and there. Again, I'm kind of using a little light, somewhat broken line to add the shadow so that it doesn't look too heavy. And I think that's all I'm gonna add. Um, so all you need to do is add an envelope and you're done. Um, but you can, you know, really use pen a lot to play with watercolor, whether it's adding little accents like this or even kind of drawing on top of a watercolor background. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a lot of fun and learned something new and that you continue to explore with watercolors. If you are posting any of your creations to Instagram, we would love to see them. So be sure to tag us at hashtag paper source and I'll see you again soon.